Sometimes we have multiple resistors in a circuit. In this case, it's possible that these resistors conspire together to act as if they were a single, larger, or equivalent resistor. In this lecture, we're going to study how these resistors in series and in parallel add together to effectively become one equivalent resistor. Again, we have two cases to consider, resistors in series and resistors in parallel. The formula you must know is that the resistance, the equivalent resistance for two resistors put in series is that they have an equivalent resistance of R equals the sum of the two resistors. In other words, the equivalent resistance as I go from point A to point B is just the sum of these two. If you think about blowing through a straw that's twice as long, it's more difficult than to blow through a single shorter straw. In the same way, it's difficult to shove current through two long, long resistors end to end as compared to just th throwing current through one resistor all by itself. In the same way, two resistors often act together equivalently as a single resistor that's the sum of the two resistances. For the resistors in parallel, the formula you must know is that 1 over the equivalent resistance of this part of the circuit, RAB, is equal to 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor. I've written that as R inverse, or R to the minus 1 power, is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. If you think about it, blowing through two straws stuck in your mouth side by side is easier than blowing through one straw because you're blowing through two diameters at once. And so actually this equivalent resistor here will always be smaller than any one of these two resistors by itself. If you think about what happens to a dam it's about to overflow because the spillway isn't allowing enough water to pass through, what typically happens is a second spillway is opened up in the dam to allow more water to come out. That's because for the same pressure behind the dam you can get twice as much current flow or water flow if you have twice as many openings. In the same way if you have twice as many resistors in parallel to pass through you'll get more current and the equivalent resistance will drop. Where do these formulae come from? Well for the, for the formula for the re resistors in series comes from the fact that we're trying to seek an equivalent resistance so that the voltage drop from point A to point B is equal to the current flow through these resistors times some equivalent resistor R sub EQ. The key point here is that the same current flows through both R1 and R2. No charge is lost in a circuit. If I were to draw a little marker right there in the middle, I know that that's a junction and the same current coming into that junction would equal the current leaving it. It would also have some new voltage out there in the middle that might not necessarily be VA or VB because there's a voltage drop across the first resistor and there's going to be a voltage drop across the second resistor. But I do know that the difference in voltage between v this location number one and point A is a voltage drop that's going to equal I times R1. I also know that the voltage drop going from point number one down to point V is also going to give me a voltage drop and that's going to equal I times R2. Here I have a couple of equations and a couple of unknowns. I can add these two equations together and the, the number V1 will cancel. And I'll have VB minus VA equals I times the sum of the two resistors. That's to say that the voltage drop VAB is equal to I times some equivalent resistance where the equivalent resistance is just the sum of the two resistors because all I'm doing is looking at what's in parenthesis there and saying that's like my original goal of finding an equivalent resistor. For the parallel form formula, the formula co that comes from the fact that we seek an equivalent resistance, REQ, such that the voltage drop from point A to point B equals the total current passing out of point A times some equivalent resistance, R sub EQ. Now I also know that this total resistance that's about to leave point A is going to split. It's going to go into a current I1 and a current I2 going down the two different paths for R1 and R2. So there's my original I and there's my two currents in the two paths that it's going to split off into. The key point here is that the voltage potential on the left side of both R1 and R2 is VA and the voltage on the right side of these two resistors is VB. Therefore, VB minus VA has to equal the voltage drop across resistor 1. So I'm going to write that as I1 times R1 by Ohm's law. Likewise, 
VB minus VA has to equal I2 times R2, because that's the voltage drop across R2 by Ohm's law. The total current is just the sum of the two currents, I1 and I2, and I can rewrite that as the voltage divided by the resistance. So I1 is VB over R1, or VB minus VA over R1. I2 is VB minus VA over R2. I can write that as delta VAB, the voltage drop, divided by R total, and I would have current total equals VAB divided by R total, which is Ohm's law, which is what I wanted to see. I would get that as long as I said R total or R equivalent, 1 over it is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. 